Hey everybody, I'm here with uh, my 2004 Jeep Grand Cherokee. Uh, I'm going to show uh, in short segments how to fix this, how I'm fixing this problem with the uh, Grand Cherokee Jeep WJ 1999-2004 is the what this would cover this video exactly. The wires that, because they're flexed by the doors opening and closing, they break and all sorts of weird stuff happens. On the driver's side, it's what's already been repaired. This is the passenger door I'm going to show. It's for, very very similar the driver's side just has an additional thing where the hood releases in the way you might there's three bolts that you can take off to get to get it to swing you know move it out of the way if you do take the bolts out all the way because if you don't the the thing will come back to its original position because of the cabling uh, mechanical cable and it will those bolts are like needles the ends of them so the basic idea is to fix the wiring in here because if you driver's side especially if it wire goes bad there's especially two the main 12 gauge power wire and the main 12 gauge ground wire if either one of those goes bad you get a door open when it's really not indicator you get uh, lights coming on inside the cab when they're not supposed to be on electric windows don't work door locks can't be act uh, you know nothing it's just a big deal but all this is a one or one probably one broken wire maybe two and if you have little smaller wires break you may lose things like the the mirror adjustment and the um speakers so, on the internet you'll find that there are many solutions to this problem. Um, well, many. Basically, taking the boot apart, uh, resoldering those two wires together, or whatever number are broken, and putting it back together. Maybe enter uh, using a short section of other wire to fill in between the two. I've had that done once on the driver's side. It failed with, well within, uh, like, within six months. It was bad again. So... That's why I did this to the driver's side, and I'm going to do today for the passenger side. I installed a genuine Mopar 14-way connector replacement with the pigtail that goes with it. The part number of this item here is shown in the video 5013962AA. It is the gray, and it's the gray colored connector. The Driver's side has a black color connector from the factory, so that's part number for the black one is 5013961AA. That's what's on the driver's side. It doesn't matter what the color is, you know, the, the connectors are physically exactly the same except for their color. So, I just happen to be able to get the correct color on each side for a really good deal on eBay. Dealer cost on these things is like $80 a piece for these kits. And you can beat that deal on eBay look for either part number if you're not and most people will not be concerned with what color the connector is um, they'll just buy find the good deal on 501 3961 AA or 3962 AA and there's even some maybe a couple other part numbers where I think that's only two but there could be some other older uh, obsolete 14 weight connectors that are functionally exactly the same except for maybe some color or minor difference somehow but it's Basically, what we're gonna, what I'm gonna do is abandon the use of those original wires for the flexing condition at all. I'm not gonna do that anymore. So what's gonna happen is these wires here in the kit will do the flexing, and they're much. They seem to be just uh, more suitable for that. They're the kind of flex of wire that uh, just seems like it'll be able to take flexing. It's not the brittle, hard copper like has been used in the door and the insulation. It seems to be more softer or not not so prone to getting hard like it's been under the hood this these uh, wires seem like they are almost under hood service you know because they get the insulation gets brittle and the wires get hard so I'm gonna take the kit apart I'm gonna start the video next thing will be to show what's in this kit okay this is the contents of the kit the gray connector part of the 3962 last four numbers of the part number 62 61 is black it is a 14 pin connector total possible uh, this application on both right and left drivers door but right and left door front doors of the Jeep are we use 10 wires so only 10 of these will be used uh, 10 positions they give you a total of 14 probably it looks like 14 gauge wires maybe 16 and four, 14 12 gauge wires so you only have you have two the original connector in this thing is has two 12s some 14s some 16s an 18 or two and some 20s so whatever you know it's like super complicated so I'm going to just do this I am going to use the 12 gauge only for this application so I did it on the driver's door so I'm going to do it on this side 
I am going to um, not bother with trying to go by some rule where you're supposed to use for the 20 gauge probably this with a little and the, by the way they give you these three connect <clears throat> three different size connectors there's 14 of the big ones 14 of the medium ones and 10 or 11 of this uh, small size so I'm sure there's something like well if you have a 20 gauge wire use the 14 um, use this replacement wire with a tiny connector if it's 18 gauge probably the same 16 gauge maybe use that with this medium connector and then 14 gauge use the 12 or 14 or 12 gauge use the, this replacement wire with that connect no it's just that's that's too much and then you have heat shrink to if you want to you could, or should if you use these butt connector style connectors to interface with the original uh, uh, or the uh, harness original harness then you can um, you know strip into the wires and strip the uh, into that wire and bond them together with this, clamp them, and then solder them, and shrink, put the shrinker, make sure it's on first before you can do all that, and then you can move the shrinker over and, sh and use heat to shrink it. I'm not going to do any of this, 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 and that. I'm using wire nuts, and I have a box of wire nuts that, depending on, and they give a chart, there's like a little instruction here that tells you um, if you're bought, if you're using two 20 gauge wire, you know, like some combination you're doing, it tells you uh, what color nut. There's like four colors to use. Uh, so it turns out that it, it takes two of the yellow because I'm bond. There's, there's two 12 gauge wires in this thing. It gets the yellow cap for bought, for putting the ends of those together, and then it looks like I more more use that um, next size down that orange colored one for everything else. So whether it's the 20. 18, 16, or 14 gauge wires being bonded to uh, the new 12, that one works fine. So before I get a lot of heat for using wire nuts in this application, it does work. I'm going to um, basically the right below the wire nut where the wires are, I, I zip tie them together there, uh, tape it up first, then zip tie the wires together there, and zip tie the tape that's around the wire nut so that it's going to be a pretty stable connection. I've already done this kind of uh, repair for the famous um, multi uh, transistorized speed controller that's used for this uh, deluxe turn the knob to your certain temperature you want, uh, the A automatic zone control or whatever you want to call it. Uh, so I've done that, but where I've had to replace the harness, it's typical to burn out on the fan motor controller under here. Right next to the panel we're going to take off, I'm going to take off. So that's the basic outline I'm going to do is just simply use this set of wires, uh, 10 of them, to uh, use in wire nut to, to the original thing. And how to do that, uh, the way I'm going to physically accomplish that, because there's multicolors there, of course in the original, uh, these are only green. So I'm going to use a multimeter to verify continuity. I'll show that in a later part of the video to verify I'm putting the correct original harness wire to the correct pin position. So that'll be up next, or later in the video at least. Okay, first thing is the actual connector to the door, which uh, again from here to that way is one set of wire, uh, one connector and wires, and then the door has a set, you know, a connector that goes inside. So the, if you notice closely, there's a tab up here. You basically, on the top and bottom, grab it, and you can just, it makes this uh, plastic uh, holder pop out. Then what you can do is you, uh, a lot of Chryslers have this, a lot, I don't know the other brands of cars, but you uh, pull this red tab down. You can pull like I did with my thumbnail, or you can push the other end. Out, but you gotta get that down; otherwise, the connector will not be able to be released. Then, notice it is a gray connector. The driver's side's black. I think that goes back to the part number difference. And I'm gonna go ahead and find uh, the uh, tab on the other side to uh, actually take this part off, and this will remain in the door. This uh, this this part of the harness that's a separate harness that's available. As a separate part, but it's uh, only from that point into the door. Okay, the next step is the boot. Is uh, this ridge here on this plastic part? The boot sort of uh, uh, clamps onto, you might say, the rubber part. So you pry the, it's easy to pry the boot off from this. This part has to be transferred to the new connector. To do that, there's a tab there. See how the tab's taking a spring up? And lift up with your finger and then you can 
Uh, it's hard to do with the one hand here, but you can move it back. And then that gets it to where, okay, now you can start to remove this. Uh, you can get the uh, part here exposed where you can push that button down now and then take the two connectors apart. So that's the sequence. Boot off of this thing, just push it off. Lift up here so this uh, plastic part can be removed from the connector that will be replaced. And then you can push that button, sort of hidden by this part, and push that button and then separate the body connector from the door connector. Okay, at this point we're fully committed. What, you, what we've done, we in the plural, uh, like just little, little uh, journalistic sense, I guess. What I've done is cut the original factory connector off the harness so that there's that we got to transfer this to the new connector so that you've got this uh, it makes it easy to pull through there's bulk there's a couple big bulkheads in the way but it's not going to be dip. the driver's side had the um, uh, what the uh, hood release so it's about even Steven as far as difficulty of getting these out there's not too difficult so there's the bundle and what's really super important is keep this because what my method is going to be to trace each color wire from because these are all the same color there is no way they can provide the correct color wires the part numbers would probably be unless they across all models of vehicles they made use the same setup but it would, the permutations would just be astronomical so it's going to be all this color wire coming off the connector the idea is to these will all be still have their color where the, each green wire connects to these uh, the the standard colored wire harness. So it'd be a matter of using a cotton. I'm going to use a multimeter, but you can use a test lamp with a battery to test the continuity between the green wire coming out of this the new connector and the uh, the pin position you want it to be at on the harness. So you do uh, do the continuity check, say. Uh, on the green wire on the new harness coming out of this position and be make sure you've got the uh, because they're gonna be in my case there's gonna be 10 green wires coming out of this connector at one time find out okay I found the continuity I found the, which one of the green wires is on this terminal and I want to bond that green wire to the certain wire that had that color which it looks like in this case is gray with a red stripe or some sort of light blue with a red stripe so and then continue out. That'll be more detailed to show how that works. That's one way of doing it. There's other ways of doing it, perhaps, but I'm just going to use a meter to ver double verify the positions of all these single color wires are in the right uh, hook up to the original um, separately colored wire that uh, is here. So it's very important to keep this bottom line. Okay, got just simply pulled the wires through the boot. Had to straighten up the boot a little bit with my other hand to allow them to pull out easily. And you have the twisted this speaker a twisted pair on the wiring diagram two of those and there's eight other wires so a total of ten so as I said before there'll be ten uh, of the fourteen possible connector uh, connections will be ten on this one you notice on the original they're blanked out those there's four spots where they sort of put a plug in uh, just probably sealed it or whatever the original ones is replacement doesn't have those so just before these not used um, and I'll show you how to assemble this next. So uh, the next step is to get uh, 14 of those green wires installed. If I said 14 green wires, I meant 10. Uh, now, new connector. This is the side with the red, the red uh, safety lock. So, looking at the other one that had that safety lock, right? Same thing, old. The four blanks are going to be if I stand them next to each other, face down. It's going to be the right hand row, so to speak, top four will be not used. So I'm going to put 10 total of these 12 gauge green wires into this new connector in all except those one, two, three, four spots there. The first step. First thing to keep in mind, you notice the detail of the of the connector. There's two hole both sides have a hole in them. I hope the camera focuses decent. Probably not. Um, let me get over here to see if it works better. One hole, if you look at the connector from the side, there's another way of doing it. It has a little bit of a forward uh, 
leaning, you might say, of the connector end. It's not as perfectly square. It sort of has a, like an overhang, like a fighter jet intake uh, on an F-16. That side, with that leaning, the hole on that side is a somewhat larger hole, somewhat larger than the other side, which is a stamped out hole to make the uh, connection. So both sides have the stamped hole in the position on the on the one side here. There's one, and the side with the leaning forward, the connector leans forward or is, extends forward a little bit more. It has a hole. That's the larger hole on the side that leans forward. So what the deal is, take the uh, that side that with the bigger hole goes into the connector into the connector so that that side is facing the red the lock connector lock so all of them going like that that's the way it should be and we're going to put one in each position except for those four on the right hand row so to speak four at the top but they all will go in where that leaning forward condition is facing this side of the connector. That's the way they go in. They go in so that that flat side here is eventually going to be, in, when it's inside, will be facing this side of the connector with the red lock. So it's just a matter of, I can't hold, I can't hold this, I'm doing this by myself, I can't hold the cell phone and do the work, but basically took uh, two, uh, two thumbs and pushed evenly on that uh, blue surround there and it just snapped into place. So now those wires are definitely locked in place. If you made a mistake, you know, but you could take these connections apart pretty easy. But you put a screwdriver through there on the back, push that blue portion forward so that it's back to where I showed originally. And then you can put a very small screwdriver into the, if you see those connectors, there's a little um, rectangular notch in each of those uh, rectangular pin positions. A screwdriver in there, uh, very, very small jewelers so you don't hurt the connector and then just uh, disengage the um, plastic clip that's on the gray part of this connector and that hole that I mentioned earlier that has to be facing a certain way it will let you uh, pull the uh, little plastic tab out of that hole and then let you pull the wire out and you can you know replace it if you had to but that's just that's another videos on that I need how to do pin pin replacements on connectors so we're at this point now connector is this part is itself uh, complete no more activity will be needed on the actual um, installing the wires into the connector. So now it's uh, stripping the ends of all the, these 10 wires, stripping uh, about half an inch, maybe maybe 5 eighths or something like that uh, on each one so that it can be wire nutted to the corresponding one of those. So what I'm going to next take, I'm going to take the time and strip these half inch, strip those a half inch. So we have uh, two um, 10 bare wires on the connector pigtail and 10 bare wires over here on the original harness. Actually, uh, before I do what I just said about the stripping, it's good to put, but, uh, you could do it after the stripping, but I did it on the driver's side before, is get these 10 wires through that boot that was there through here up to that point. Now, that is not going to work out too easy if you leave the boot in place. I guess it could be done, but it's just it's just too much. So what I'm going to do to make it easy is just pull this boot out completely, and then be able be able to straighten it out and push these wires through. I'll show you how to do that. It's not that hard. Is it? Is I just couldn't do it. With the, hold the camera and do it with two hands. That's how it's going to look. So the tanks engaged into the gray connector, black if you're you know it could be a black connector, and just like original, so the wire, the boot will engage that uh, circumference there, perimeter around that connector, and that's what will hold the boot on to it going back into the door. So, next step, wires through the boot, then strip them. Makes it a little easier. Okay, just begin with uh, put a. I, I use a tie wrap. That's a pretty fat one, but a much smaller one would work. Just to bind all of them together, so that when I push it through this boot and it goes in from the double big boot end out with the wire sticking out through the oh sorry nope that's not right nope goofed up 
connect the wires start going in through the small end and they protrude out of the big end that's what the connector goes on this end so forget that thing i just said a minute ago a second ago it's um the wires go in the small end first with the connector butting up against that small end of this boot and the wires protruding out of the large end just themselves okay that's uh, how it goes one in the small end all the wires are sticking out of the larger end uh, i'm going to engage this that uh, connector surround into the boot and then show you that once it's done okay the uh, boot is uh, the groove in the boot is now engaged with that uh, perimeter on this connector which is properly bonded to the new connector here this, I'm sorry this connector surround which is properly bonded to the connector it came out you know you can find it either way the, the red lock was facing me when I opened the door after I got the boot out of the uh, after I got the connector out of the door and uh, I prefer I'll put it that way the driver's door I prefer it that way the driver's door was not like that it was the other way around and when I did it I put the connector um, the this way so that red latch mechanism is easy to get to. Uh, the boot, it's been, you know, it started off life probably uh, ambidextrous, but over time, of course, it's gotten used to being, um, I think even the driver's door had a up, a word up somewhere on it. This one, I'm just going to restore the boot the same orientation. In this case, it's got a little difference, like a little tab you grab there, which under that, under this, is the plastic connector to release, top and bottom. The bottom one is without the little line, the little serrations in the design on the rubber or whatever plastic this is. So that's how it came out. I'm going to put it back that way so it's used to flexing the same direction. I don't know if that makes any difference or not. So that's so far um, what we got going here is a fully assembled um, body side connector. What they call this the body side, even though it physically is at the door and you have the door side connector which is actually in go can fall in the door or fall but go into the door so jeep nomenclature uh, on the back doors it makes more sense because the body this connector is actually at the body and the door connector this connector would be there too but you can separate them at this point and then replace the entire harness great back doors both of them use the same part number front doors you know, you wish they'd done the same. I wish they'd done the same thing because you could either resort to this kind of repair or just replace the harness. I have that as a choice. It's much easier to snap things together and do all this wire cutting. And a lot of people want to do the soldering with the connectors and the shrink wrap and all that. And, uh, I don't want. To, I don't want to do that. that. I don't think that's necessary. I've never had a problem with doing wire nuts. So as long as I, you know. The, Concern is that they come loose in an automotive application. Well, it's easy to address with uh, tape and tie wraps. So that's what that's ready. To go. That's how that looks like. Completely ready to go. Is it, um, you know, ready to put the boot back into the body? Which I'll. That's that's a little bit of work, but um, next step is to do that. Get the boot back in, uh, and then leave the connector not connected to the door connector at this point, and then start stripping wires. Okay, hey, got the uh, so just a matter of pushing the wires through the hole and um, snapping this uh, into the groove of the body or sheet metal of the body fits in the groove of the boot. So it's nice and sticking out here just right in my face so I can do the probing of the terminals when necessary. Uh, that's going to be great. Um, over here, see inside, the boot's got to be it's partly installed. See, it's Part of it's here, but I got to make sure that the entire perimeter is pulled inside the, the uh, where the body uh, sheet metal is, so that the this this like I said is a double a double uh, wall here. So this will be totally engaged around its perimeter. It's just a matter of pulling and tugging at it until it snaps into place, and then it's ready for uh, doing like I said, going back to the stripping of the wires and connecting the wires. Okay, took a little while, but got that inner boot where it should be reinstalling the inner uh, panel of the sheet the inner sheet metal it, I did I removed the uh, bulkhead connector this uh, multi-pin bulkhead connector here to allow that main cabling to swing out of the way so I could get my hand in there and work that boot in place so on the driver's side it was the hood release on this side it was that bulkhead connector so next thing is I'm gonna reconnect that and then strip the wires 
Okay, at the end of the wire stripping activity, there are 10 same color green wires coming from the new connector. And there are the 10 original OEM uh, wires going into the body's wiring harness. So uh, these used to pass through the rubber boot and uh, connect to the original connector, which we've kept, I've kept that for the try to find out which plain green wire goes to which position on the OEM colors, uh, on the OEM connector by means of the colors that are left over in the connector. And um, so it's just a matter of uh, wire nutting the, the correct pairs together and we get the meter and show how that's done, uh, how I do that. And uh, the idea is once it's all put together, this is extra, this wire is much heavier duty, 12 gauge every connector and it looks like it's going to take flexing a lot better than the original. Because the passenger side wasn't used as much as the driver by far, none of these wires I could strip right at the ends uh, where they had been disconnected, where they had been cut from the connector. Uh, all this length leading up to these stripped ends is in really good shape. So the passenger side really didn't need to be repaired at all. Need. But since I've done all the other doors except this one, I had the part to do it. I might as well do it. That way, should um, you know, by the time the Jeep goes to the yard, uh, won't, these doors won't be a problem at least. So that's how that looks, and I'll show you how I pair them up correctly to these plain to the single colored wires over here. And, um, and again, you may you may have a different way of style of doing the work. This is how I do it. There's uh, it's pretty much I'm going to guarantee that the right pin, which is you know with these wires ends up connected to the right colored original wire. Oh, and just a note, Jeep, in this original, these original wires, there's 12 gauge, 14 gauge, 16 gauge, 18 gauge, and 20 gauge. So I hope the engineer who came up with this uh, copper saving technique of probably using the exact minimum size wire available for each circuit got some award because it's kind of ridiculous thing that goes along with many automobiles. You know, it really, Use tw for it should be something like 20 gauge anything that requires a 20 gauge 18 gauge or 16 gauge just use 16 gauge if it requires 14 12 or 10 use 10 uh, or maybe uh, 12 and 14 use 12 and 10 is a separate uh, he that's pretty heavy wire but this this come on guys well let me get there's like a 20 18 16 14 12 five different gauges on a 10 uh, for 10 wires. Uh, you got to be kidding, right? You couldn't come up with a little more uniformity than that. But that's when you're under pressure at a corporation to save money. Things like that happen. You know, you get that kind of ridiculous. Uh, so I'm using all 12 gauge for the uh, from the connector size. So none of that trying to match that. You know, that's that's done. And this side will be uh, going to. Of course, it has to. I have to live with whatever it is. But uh, just want to make a note of that. That uh, man, it could be so much more uniform uh, than what they got here. So. Next step is to start uh, with a meter. I'm going to use a meter, but you could use again a, a battery-powered test light. It needs to be battery-powered because the power to the Jeep has been disconnected because of the battery terminal removal, and you know why? Because you got a bunch of bare wires hanging here. This is the power wire. Black is the two. These are the two 12 gauge power, and uh, the ground is black, and it's the same colors on the driver's side. You don't want those good short eyes. So you want the battery disconnected because you got a bunch of stuff hanging here that could get damaged if uh, if it got to the power wire. So, there's, of course, if you work carefully, you could probably get around uh, that by taping off the power wire separate from everything else. But um, with a bunch of computerized body, what they call a body control module stuff, like the power mirrors and all this stuff has to go through a computer relay to activate. Um, yeah, why risk it, right? It's easy to do with a, with a battery-powered test light. Um, or if you have a multimeter, let's see, it's just as easy. Okay, I've got my multimeter set up for a basic continuity test. Like when there's a continuity between the, the connections, it will give an indication. And um, so it's just, here's what to do. So, looking at the original connector, right, that red button, so that's, well, so the original, I've got it oriented physically in space, the same as the new connector. The red button is on the left side, facing into it, with the butt with it pointing down. The red button down and to the left. So that's the exact orientation. 
looking at the back that means that the uh, row that's on the left side here on the back is these right four bottom terminal those are the ones that do not have a connection so the other 10 that means the three on this right side at the top and all seven over here have a wire a green wire connected to them they represent a green, uh, green wire so I'm going to um, uh, go ahead and just grab a um, to say the power wire uh, so do that we might as well do it first the original orange it's a um, orange with a white stripe power wire and on this original connector that was on the side that would be on the back second one down on the right transpositioning it it's the second one down on the left it's that terminal there that is the power wire so on this new connector it's there second one on the left so I want to find which one of these green wires is that so I've got these um, nice probes here that I hope will stay in place while I can just probe the other wires. So I'm going to hook it up to hook the probe up to just that terminal. See, when you're doing video, this kind of stuff's boring to watch because somebody fiddling with something while you're wanting to know how to do this job. Okay, so that probe is engaged, if you look, in such a way that it's touching that second down terminal, which again, we, we reliably, in the beginning, we reliably put a green wire in every one of these positions, not those four, but the other ten. So, turning it around, with the red pointing down on the left, power wire, was second down on the left this way but it's on the right it's on the uh, right this side but it's on the left this side which is where that thing's connected so it's just a matter of taking the other lead of the multimeter and touching which green wire is that terminal because you don't have the color codes anymore on this side so let's see now there's 10 what's my chances of how many do I have to touch to get the right one on average, it'd be five, right? Four, or five, or six, because that's the middle. But you know how that goes? It'd probably be like nine or ten, right? So it's not that one. 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 It's that one. So that's number one, two, three, four, five, six. Huh? So about average. All right. I can, that's that's better than what. Okay. Great, so I know this wire is the one that belongs to, needs to be bonded to that wire, connected to the original power wire. And that will furnish power, the white and uh, red with white stripe, orange with white stripe, to that pin position there, which is exactly what the original was. So now it's time to wire nut. And you start the process of wire, so you twist the wires together. In this case, uh, that's done. That, that's the wire we determine with continuity should be on that particular pin and now it's a I'm going to use a yellow there's a multicolored set of wire nuts I am going to use this one which is for 12 gauge wires up to, up to two 12 gauges which is exactly what that is the 12 gauge replacement and the original 12 gauge wire nut on now to make sure it doesn't come loose we're going to do it I'm going to wrap it with electrical tape from about here capture the wires with the tape wrap around the base of it and about maybe Oh, halfway or maybe close all the way up on this side with electrical tape. Then two small tie wraps. I used that huge one earlier to keep the wires together when pushing it through that um, boot. Two small tie, one around the tape at the bottom, one around up the top, so that you know what that those wires and then the wire nut are not going to have any relative movement um, for the life of the vehicle. Basically, that's to be hoped. So that's a pretty tighten it pretty good. The wire nuts on there are good, and then I'll show you what it looks like after that uh, next step's done. Okay, that's what the um, two 12 gauges wire nutted together looks like. I mean, it's like not super sano as far as appearance, but it, it's a solid connection. And the only other one that'll get that yellow is the um, 12 gauge original uh, ground wire. 
and uh, whatever which one of these green wires is that connection. And the others will be the um, light orange. Uh, that will be for the 16, or the 20, 18, 16, or 14 gauge wires that bond to those 12s. I'll use these. So that the uh, they're good for. Uh, I think uh, the, these go from 214. There's a chart, but one 12 gauge and a small wire together. These are, are the, the good size to use. And there's this kit has uh, a, one bigger than what I've just used. The yellow one there for you know multiple 12 gauge or even 10 gauge I think on this one and the little blue ones are bonding like two 20 gauges or 18 gauges together maybe 16s even so it's a nice little kit I got it at Home Depot actually so you know and they have refill packets available like assortments you can just buy an assortment pack okay next one I want to do and you can do these in any order is the ground wire which would be if you look at the back of the original connector it is one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, five. There's seven on each side, so it's the fifth one down on the original connector. So yeah, one, two, three, four, five. Transpositioning it around to where it's oriented like this, it would be the fifth down on the left side, which means that position there, which is uh, two, uh, third one from the bottom. So it's five, one below six, one below a seven, and there's seven per row. So that's the last. So that's the right position there. And I've already probed this. this is like a cheat sheet. I'll tell you right now, it was out of the nine wires left, possible nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, six, seven, eight, nine. Last one. So, you know, it just goes to show you, <laughs> you get to bet on that, like what's the chance of getting the last of the nine possibilities. So that's the wire. This one will go to the original black wire, both are 12 gauge, so you can get the yellow wire nut. Okay, here's the almost completed thing. Boots, connectors reconnected, like, you know, back to normal. Boots in place. Here's what the repair looks like before it's all buttoned up. It's time to reconnect the battery, verify all the little goodies work, window, door lock, speaker, you know, all the stuff. Um, and then uh, tuck the stuff under the dash away, you know, wrap it up with some electrical tape, tie wrap that. So I'll show you after all that's done. Okay, here's the finished job. The, um... The original, there, put a bit of electrical tape around the, it didn't really need that there. It was the driver's side, I used that method, but didn't need it. And then here, a piece of a uh, pretty good sized tie wrap to just keep the bundle together. Another tie wrap around, around the cabling to that bulkhead that was removed earlier to, you know, make it easier to get the wires through the boot or get the boot removed and replaced, actually. Sort of keeping the pigtail green and a u-turn nice clean u-turn and then their original harness goes up into the what's left of well <clears throat> most of the wiring for the original harness goes up and of course the connectors on the other end of the green wire set so that is um, and the kick panel what will happen is the kick panel will go on nicely because it's it's got plenty of room right in that location to conceal, um, it's quite a bit of extra wire compared to the original, but it does fit perfectly in this uh, wraparound configuration. So I checked checked all the things, I, which is the door lock, power mirrors, uh, all the positions up, down, left, right, power mirrors, a window up and down, door lock, lock and unlock, speaker, radio, you know, so turn the balance all the way over to the right. Yes, it checks good. So all the functions of this door work fine and that means all the connections were made correctly and nothing's loose so you can QC your work before you finalize and put it all back together the uh, body panels or the um, interior panels so that way not to take it, you know, at least that much work is saved if you and before you tie it up permanently well not permanently but with the tie wraps 
and then check it again to make sure nothing came loose. Uh, that, that should do it. This repair should be the last the Jeep you own will ever need. In 1999 to 2004 Grand Cherokee will ever need uh, for this issue of doors and their wiring uh, breaking in this uh, boot area. All right, that's it. In the video, post any uh, questions and comments. I'll try to get back to you on the um, particulars if you are interested in doing the job this way.